Well, hi there. Welcome to part three of our, well, for the moment, three-part series on every species that I own. And obviously, I mean, we've already had two full videos of this, so I keep a lot of different species of things because I use them for educational purposes and I find a lot of joy in them. And this snake is one of them that brings me a ton of joy. This is Sinatra. He is my male blue-eyed leucistic ball python. He's probably a pastel super lesser for those of you who are curious. And this is my dream snake. Uh, I wanted one of these for years and years and years and I actually started my entire breeding program with ball pythons with the goal of making blue-eyed leucistics and that is the direction I've continued to go in even though I've now made several of them. I love them. Uh, he was one of my first that I ever produced and he's just glorious. I'm, I'm so excited by him. Honestly, he has far surpassed my expectations for how much I would love these snakes. And the bigger they get, the whiter they get, and he's just more and more fun all the time. He's actually the son of one of my favorite snakes in the world, who's Wally. He's a, a lesser ball python, one of the first ball pythons I ever got, and I adore him. And then his mom is a pastel lesser, and this is their glorious, glorious, super beautiful offspring. I love him. Of course, we have a video on ball pythons, so if you want to see some of the other ball pythons that I have, make sure to check that out down in the description. We'll have links to all the videos about the different animals that I have down in the description, but let's see what else I've got. All right, this is Peaches. Peaches is my Maruki blue tongue skink. And I dreamed about having a blue tongue skink since the first time I ever saw one when I was just a kid. So for about 15 years, I dreamed of having one. And finally, I got Peaches. I took him in as a quasi-rescue. I was a rehoming for Peaches. And so I, I did pay for him from the original owners. And I have loved him. He's been a really, really just tremendous animal to keep. Blue tongue skinks are one of the coolest animals you can possibly have. And we have a whole video on them, how much they rock, down in the description. So be sure to check that out. Let's see what else we got for you. This is my female Trumper albino snow leopard gecko. And to be perfectly honest, leopard geckos took a long time to grow on me. At first, I didn't like their fat tails. I kind of liked the other coleonyx geckos, like the banded geckos that we have here in the United States. I liked those a lot better than the leopard geckos. And then I discovered the albino snows and the super snow leopard geckos, and I thought, those are so cool. And in sort of the same way that blue-eyed leucistic ball pythons made me love ball pythons all of a sudden, these leopard geckos made me love leopard geckos. And now I love leopard geckos pretty much across the board, and there are all kinds of cool morphs and the wild types, I love them all. I've, I've become totally enamored with leopard geckos, and that's why we recommend them so highly. They're, they're I think, the highest scoring lizard we've ever scored, so make sure to check out the video on those down in the description. Let's carry on. This is Gary, and Gary is my wife's yellowfoot tortoise, and he was my first tortoise that I ever had long before we got the sulcata. We also took him in as a bit of a rescue. He's one that my wife fell in love with. I'm not a big tortoise person myself, but Gary and especially Big Daddy have won me over big time, and he is really wonderful. I, I really like him. Care-wise, they're a bit like having a big box turtle because they eat more than just vegetation. They, they eat a, a broader, more omnivorous diet. And they're just kind of, they're a lot of fun, very pleasant little dudes. And he's actually a very impressive tortoise when he's not anywhere close to Big Daddy. It's only when he's next to Big Daddy that people think this is the baby tortoise. But uh, I love Gary. I'm, I'm glad Leisha talked me into him. All right. Up next is the only animal that I am not handling. You'll notice I handled my grumpy monitor, I even handled my morning geckos, but I am not handling my gold dust day gecko. She's just too fast and too delicate, and I should probably talk to you a little bit about why I got her, and my thoughts on gold dust day geckos, because we haven't covered them yet, and we will, and I do like them. I, I think they're just beautiful, I love that they're active during the day, 
is really excited about having her, and I do enjoy her, but she is considerably more shy than I would prefer, which means I don't get to see her very often, and she's not handleable, so there really aren't very many ways to interact with her. I think if you're going to have some of the smaller day geckos, you either need to have them in a fairly public place, not so public that they're stressed all the time, but public enough so they get used to you being there, because mine just hides whenever I'm around. I see her maybe once a week, and I'm thrilled when I get the chance, but she's almost always hiding. And so, not sure I would recommend them, but if that's what you want in a pet, they're great. This is one of the few pets that I'm probably a little bit disappointed in, but still a very, very cool lizard. This is Sarlacc, and he's my male Kenyan sand boa, and I'm specifying now because just yesterday I got a second Kenyan sand boa. She's an albino female. You can notice in our video, which is down in the description, on Kenyan sand boas, I talked about how inexpensive their morphs are, and the albinos are really, really cool. And I love the females because they get so big, and so I decided I need a female Kenyan sand boa in my life too. So now I have two of them. They have far surpassed my expectations. Honestly, I'm not quite sure why I got him in the first place. Uh, I know, oh yes I do. I know exactly why I got him in the first place. I won in a raffle a male spider ball python. And I had no need for a male spider ball python. It was a, it was a contest, it wasn't even a raffle. It was a contest to see if you could guess the weight of the snake and I nailed it. And so I won the snake. And I don't really like giveaways of live animals because who knows if that's the right pet for you. But I ended up with one. And so I traded him to my local pet store for this male canyon sand boa. And I have been so impressed by sand boas. They are such neat snakes. They've become one of my very favorites. And honestly, if I don't keep myself in check, I could end up with like a dozen of them because they're just so cool. I just love them. I've been blown away and even their derpy little faces have grown on me. Who couldn't love a sand boa? This is my male Cuban false chameleon who right at this moment is shedding his skin, which is super cool because it doesn't take them very long to do it. It just kind of, all of a sudden they get milky, that skin separates, and they gobble it all down. You never even knew they did it, so it's kind of fun that I caught him in the act. But Cuban false chameleons are really neat. I actually looked for one for a long time because I knew I wanted false chameleons and I couldn't find them anywhere. And that's actually when I caved and got my nidinol because I'm like, well, maybe I can get a nidinol to be nice like these guys are always. These guys are just so well behaved, so mellow. In fact, that's about my only complaint about them is they're a little bit boring to keep because they just sit still and hang out all day and that makes them very pleasant to handle but it also makes them very boring to watch and that's really my only complaint about these guys it's kind of something that's much worse about them compared to true chameleons because true chameleons are generally very active and these guys are very not active but in all other ways they're just out of this world fantastic i love them i shouldn't complain you're just a great wizard and i'm very happy i have him and we've got videos on these guys also down in the description, so check them out. We have a full video on these guys in the works, so stay tuned. So this is Indy, and Indy is my tiger whiptail. And he's actually kind of a funny story because I didn't intend to have a tiger whiptail, though I do really like them because they are essentially just tiny little tegus. Uh, I went herping, and I normally don't keep any of the things I catch when I go herping, uh, I didn't even have a container to keep anything in, but Indy here was so low key, and whiptails normally are not, that he just hung out on my hand and on my shoulder. And I said, well, if he stays on my hand and my shoulder until we get back, uh, I guess I'll bring him home. And he did. So I've got him. And my, my hope with him uh, I would love for these guys to be available a captive bred in the pet trade, so I may see if anybody has a female. I had a friend who had a female, but these guys don't live very long, and his was already an adult, and so she passed on, unfortunately. So we'll have to see what my long-term plans are for Indy, but he is 
really like a tiny tegu. They're, they're teed lizards just like the tegus are. If you were a varanid lizard, we consider all the varanids to be monitors, so I'm really not sure why we don't consider all of the teeds to be tegus, but he essentially is just a tiny little gus gus, and he'll be excellent for education on native species, so I'm really excited to get to show him to a lot of people in the future. He's just a great little guy. And even my little three-year-old daughter, when she was still two, she could handle him because he's that nice and she's that good with creatures. Last, but certainly not least, is my common boa, Ruby. I love her, and she has decided to go into blue for us because she didn't want to show off how gloriously beautiful she is most of the time. But she's a pretty snake, even when she's a little bit milky. I love this girl. I, I had a chance, I, after I, I got uh, my Central American boa, and she got up to about full size, I decided she was just a little bit smaller than what would be ideal for presentations and for snake hugs because hugs from boas are just the best and I thought if she were just a little bit heavier bodied that would be like the perfect snake to handle and so I decided I wanted to get a female common boa and just then one of my friends had a female boa drop a whole litter and I got pick of the litter and I went in there and I found one that had the most beautiful saddles. I just love them, that's, that's this marking up high. And another one that had just the most beautiful red tail. And I love both those snakes, so I pulled them both out and they both turned out to be the same snake. And I said, if that one's a girl, I'm getting her. And it was, and I ended up with Ruby and I have just fallen in love with her. I've actually been around a few of her siblings and they were all a little bit cantankerous, but Ruby's always been nice for me. Except for one time when I had her out, I was taking pictures and I was circling around her on the ground like a predator and I freaked her out. And I could tell right before she got freaked out, I'm like, what am I doing? And then she was afraid and it was a little bit difficult moving her back into her enclosure. But other than that, she's been just a total sweetheart for me. I adore her. And this concludes our tour of every species of reptile that I keep. I, I do have a few invertebrates. I've got one species of primate that I keep. Uh, we do have videos that feature them as well. And so that's it. That's, that's the whole tour of every species that I keep. Now I should mention, I do have one more heading my way, which is a false water cobra. When I was up with Emily from Snake Discovery, I handled her false water cobras and fell in love with them like I never fall in love with a snake. I'm going to be trying on more things. Uh, as time goes on, I'm sort of moving away from breeding and I'm moving into having more different kinds of things so I can talk with you guys and help you guys pick out just the perfect pet reptile for you. So, so make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, we've got a lot more cool animals coming your way, more than even just the ones that I own because as many species of reptiles as I just showed you guys, I know people who have several times that many. And so we've got all the connections that we're going to need to bring you content for a very, very long time and hope, hopefully we'll be able to help you find the perfect pet reptile for you. Thank you all for following us to this point, and we hope to see you real soon. I have excellent friends and a really wonderful and supportive local herp community. So now that she's found a place to hide, I guess we'll have to call it a day. Hope to see you real soon. <laughs> Uh, did and of course, we got a video on false chameleons. No, we don't. No, we don't. We don't have one. But they are part of a head to head. So, someday we will have one. Is that a wild type? No. What's a wild type look like? Brownish, reddish spots. You yeah. know. Yeah, but they're, 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 they've got so yeah. many. No, they don't have any. Their spots are. They have so many spots, they're almost black. Really? And then their yellow are just awesome. Oh, you're looking at me. There you go. <laughs>